Take a Man podcast from Odyssey Sports. Logan Paulson there. Craig Hoffman here. And we have one more side of the ball to talk about, which is the commander's defense against Justin Fields and the Bears offense. Of course, don't forget, we'll be breaking all this down as well. Pre-game, uh, 6.30, the official start time for the Take Command pre-game show live at Tap Sports Bar, MGM National Harbor. We'll be live on YouTube at 106.7 The Fan and at the Team 980. And of course, live on both radio stations and the streams on the free, free, they said, Logan, Odyssey oh, app. Nice. All right. Yeah, we don't charge for the app. We don't charge for you to listen during the app. You just you just download it, and then here we are. That's good. Um, all right. So, Fields. Uh, he's dangerous. <laughs> he's dangerous, man. He's got a big arm. He's really fast. Uh, he makes plays off schedule, but down in, down out so far in his NFL career, not very good. Yeah. And it's I, kind of, it's kind of the scariest thing to prepare for. Cause like, you just don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> like you don't want to be the team that gets diced by Justin Fields, but also, you know, on average, you're not going to be. So like, what do you see from the Chicago offense? Luke Getzey, the offensive coordinator, you know, they've had all kinds of trouble this year, by the way, they've got the chase Claypool thing looming over them. Like they're a mess, but yeah. also they're a mess with talent. And that's, that's moderately terrifying. Yeah. And I think mess with talent. I don't know if I'd go. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Let's just like get DJ Moore's this. talented. He's, DJ Moore like, is you, you awesome. slip a ta- you slip a tackle yeah. and he can score on you. And that's kind of what I mean, right? It's like yeah. they don't have talent all over the place, but they have individual talented pieces that are capable of scoring from anywhere on the field. Yeah. And that explosive plays ruin your day as a defense. And that's what scares me. Yeah. So what I'd say is that I felt like early in the season, I was like, what are you guys doing offensively? Like, especially with Fields, I'm talking about the Bears staff. They were kind of, they weren't running the quarterback. They weren't moving the pocket. They were just kind of like, get back there, throw the football, read defenses. And I don't think that's who he is at this point in his career. Like, he, I think he can get there. I think he's like, when you, you, you said this, he is extremely talented. That ball flies out of his hand. He can touch anywhere on the field. Like, it's awesome watching him throw the football when he's decisive. But one of the things I love about the, the the Denver game is they were like, we are going to speak to what you do well. We're going to give you simple reads. We're going to give you a couple opportunities to push the ball down the field. We're going to be very selective about that. But down to down, we're going to lead on the quarterback run. We're going to run a lot of zone read. We're going to run a lot of RPO. We're going to run a lot of keepers and not nakeds, but keepers. And so the difference between a naked and a keeper is a naked is when, for example, I'm rolling to my right as a quarterback. And I don't leave, I don't block the defensive end. And so the way you're blocking the defensive end is you're hoping the action, the run action, uh, um, going to the offensive left, pulls that that defensive end to the right to the left, and you cannot flank him with the quarterback. I'm not saying do that if you're them. What they've been doing is they've been bringing a fullback back back to block that defensive end, or motioning a tight end to block down to give him the perimeter, to give him the opportunity to run, and give him the opportunity to pass. And I feel like that's been very effective uh, for for them. Also, I think they do a really good job running the football. You know, Khalil Herbert, I think, is the running back's name. Number 24 yep. is not. He's really good. He's not like a world beater, but he's good. Like, he's he's a he's a running back's running back is how I would characterize him. He's physical. He's got good vision. He's got good short area bursts. He's not going to home run hit you to death or anything like that, but he's going to double, sing, double and single you to death over the course of a game. And I think that's very valuable for what they do. And so I think... The offensive line is playing better than people think and is a better group than people think, despite a couple injuries they have there. But I think what the last game showed me is is basically the 2012 um, Washington Commanders, right? When Robert Griffin was here. Like, that's yeah. what they're doing. It's we are going to lean heavily on the run game. We're going to lean heavy on the play action. We're going to lean heavy on the keeper, you know, moving the pocket with the quarterback, get him on the perimeter. And basically limit his ability to like sit and read a concept one, two, three, four. If you look at his explosive plays from last game, it's pretty much like we think the ball is going to go here and he throws the ball there. So they run a play. Uh, it's a really nice play design. They line up um, uh, DJ Moore outside to the left. He motions across with the motion. The nickel follows him. He runs an out and up and he burns the nickel because he's an explosive football player for a touchdown. And all Fields does is he holds the post safety in the middle of the field and then throws the throws the go to Moore. And Moore is good enough to win that one-on-one matchup versus your third corner, right? So the next play, it's um, it's all go. They motion Moore the other way from a three-by-one to a two-by-two. Two. 
they move with more. The the Denver defense does. He looks to, at the middle field safety. He knows they've dropped the tight end, and he just throws the tight end on a bus. Like that's kind of what they're doing. There's nothing complicated about that. It's just good. Like, hey, man, this is our best player. Let's use him to distract you, and let's get him the football. And they found explosive plays, and obviously Denver busted some coverages and helped them out a little bit. But in terms of down-to-down consistency, I look at those keepers, and he's throwing – He's he probably threw six flats in the first half for 60 yards because you're right. to the perimeter, you're getting it to a playmaker. Easy throws, big yes, yards. 100%. And that is, for him, perfect. So if I'm Jack, I'm like, I want to limit that as much as possible. Because I don't want him getting those throws. I want them to get out of that. I want him in the pocket. I want him having to read an NFL defense because I don't think he can do that. So how do you do that? That's that's kind of the key question because you know one one thing that helps is the Commanders have team speed. Um, they do. Specifically, yes. they have fifty two. They have Jamin Davis, who is one of the rare linebackers in the league who can run with Justin Fields. Yeah. And not that you want to do that a lot uh, because Justin Fields is faster than Jamin, but Jamin can certainly make that getting the edge a lot harder. Also, good luck rolling to Montez Sweat side. Um, yeah. This is where having a defensive end that runs a four three nine is very beneficial, which I think 100%. is what Montez ran. It's not, it was four four. Was it four four? Four four one. Clo- so my bad, I was off two hundredths. Yeah, um, for all those close, close combine enough. nerds out there. Yeah, yeah, like he's. <laughs> He's insanely fast and like Chase is also fast, but you know, running that to Montez's side, which by the way is the side that he's going to want to run to uh, yeah. because he's right handed, mm-hmm. uh, is definitively helpful uh, in defending some of that stuff. Cause like, go ahead, block Montez sweat with the fullback. Good luck with that. Um, but there's also other things you could do schematically, strategically. And also, I do wonder, like, from a personnel matchup standpoint, do you just chat? Like, Kendall is playing incredible football right now yeah um do you keep your guys where they've been or do you follow the one weapon they have in dj Moore with kendall fuller all around the field and be like hey kendall you're on you're on man duty uh let's shut this guy down like i I think that there are options i don't know if any of them are good that's why jack is a defensive coordinator and i'm a (laughs) podcast and radio host but like of those of those factors what do you think matters what do you think the plan will be man you asked a ton of questions and we could probably do two hours on this but i'll try to keep it tight so one of the things about the keeper uh the keeper naked game that you were talking about is when you run the zone read it becomes hard to defend that and what i mean by that is when we played Dallas in 2012, what they started doing, because we we're running so many keepers, and they just said, DeMarcus Ware and Spencer, Anthony Spencer, just run directly at the quarterback and hit him because he's going to keep the ball one of these times. And they would get sacks doing that. <clears throat> and so what we started doing is just zone reading that player. And what I mean by that is when that player runs at the quarterback and you're giving him the zone read action, the running that, that gap that he's supposed to close down to has now been completely vacated because he's attacking the quarterback. So you hand the ball off to the running back. The run, Alfred Morris gets ten yards, and you just do that until they start closing down, and you go back to the and you go back to the quarterback keep. So what Jack has done over the course of his career, he's done a whole bunch of different things, but he's put that guy, that defensive end, in the six, had an overhang player, the linebacker scrape over top. So you give them a false read, and that linebacker, who's Jamin in this case or Cam, can help with the keeper. So there are a couple of different ways, but everything you do has a negative, right? So when I do that, when I take Jamin out of the box or whoever out of the box to match the keeper or match his own read, <clears throat> I'm now making myself susceptible to something in the A or B gap because that's where he's traditionally fitting that run. So it's just, it's it's a layer thing about, I can't do the same thing all the time. So like maybe one time I let Montez just go get the quarterback. And maybe one maybe one time Montez is stunting and Jamin's scraping. And maybe one time we have Montez just read the quarterback out and give him no read, like kind of a muddy read. And so then he makes a mistake and then Montez gets attacked for loss. So there are layers to it. But I think what kills you is when you get in, in saying there is one solution to this problem and that's what we're going to do. I think that's where the mistake lies and, and, and happens. So and with regards to, to, to Moore, like he's he's an exception. He reminds me a lot of Steve Smith. I know Steve Smith is one of your favorite players. He's one of my favorite players. Yeah, he's, he's kind of that undersized guy who's like hyper physical and, and can win 50 50 balls. And to me, the guy that I would want on him in this defense is Benjamin St. Just. And Benjamin St. Just has just shown an ability. I said this last week. He's shown an ability and a confidence to match up with top-level receivers at kind of all levels of the defense. And if there's a matchup that I want, I want that guy, our guy who's 6'3", with long arms and physical at the catch point and physical at the line of scrimmage, to disrupt that. 
I, that's what I want. Um, and obviously, St. Juice has done an excellent job playing nickel. He was the highest graded player in the defense last week via PFF and did a great job with some open field tackles and coverage responsibilities. So maybe you don't want to move that piece out of that spot. But I just think about training camp. I think about all the opportunities he's had last year, you know, matching up against Justin Jefferson. I say, that's the guy I want. But that's, I think, what we're getting to here is that this team, this Bears team, which on paper is not very good because of the scheme, because of the running quarterback on a short week, it, it presents issues that you have to really think about and kind of say, what's the best way to stop this? And if I'm the Bears, I'm saying, what's the next evolution of this? Because like when they did this to New York last year, New York with Daniel Jones was doing the same thing. A little bit of zone read, but more keepers to the perimeter, naked to the perimeter. Dallas comes into town, really jacks them up. The next week they play Washington and they have an answer for it. And we can't stop the keepers. So if the Bears are kind of one step ahead in terms of this evolution, it's gonna it can be it can be a very challenging solution for Jack to find. Yeah, it's definitely tough. I, I think that, you know, as a fan, uh or someone rooting for Washington, the hope is that all that happened was they played the Broncos and the Broncos sucked defensively. Sucked, yeah. well, uh, like, I mean, which oh. could be a thing. Like, you know, they gave up seventy uh to to Miami and then they came back the next week against a Bears team that has looked like a disaster against basically everyone else. And they give up 28 in the first half. Um, well, now, I, you... I do think that's a, qu a good question, though, is like what happened between first half and second half? Because obviously the Bears were not very good after halftime. So um, that is well, that is a relevant piece of data as well. Well, what I would say that I think is interesting, and you said this, is that the team's speed and Jack's defensive philosophy, like they, I thought they were going to come out and play Cinco and run eight-man boxes versus Philly, but they were pretty much like, we trust our front to stop the run. And for, yeah. in large part, they did. And part of it's because they are skilled in that front, the front six, seven, however you want to count that group. And so yeah. I think if they can do that and have extras like safeties and coverage pieces in the back end, those keepers are going to be dead. Like one of the things that um, that uh, the Broncos did is they played a little bit more heavy match man type stuff at a cover one structures. And those, so obviously the flat was open a bunch, but also that like second level crosser at 10 yards was wide open because that backside safety is a run player and he should be there. So I think Jack, because of the softer coverage structures, is going to be like, hey, man, like we trust our front to kind of handle this and play good football and we'll just kind of play a softer cover structure back here and good luck trying to find an open guy because I will say Justin Fields, at his worst, cannot read a defense like a lick. So um, I think if I'm Jack, I'm kind of saying, let's do what we've been doing which I yeah. know a lot of fans get freaked out about, but I actually like that in this game to kind of say, hey, let's be a little bit more conservative. Let's make them earn this because I don't think when you look at the the, the game composition that you, you said this, Denver had a bust for a tight end touchdown. They had a bust on like a third and two where the corner is trying to jump the out and he hits, and he hits the go to Rondell Moore for like a 45-yard gain. Those are the types of plays you can't have. Like make them – this is a type of offense you – make them earn – every inch in five yard increments i don't care because they will screw it up at some point they're not talented enough on the offensive line the quarterback's not talented enough make them go 15 plays philly they can right. do it right they can do it we saw them do it but this this group i don't think they can do it down to down yeah i also wonder from a personnel usage standpoint like emmanuel force played a ton of snaps compared to what he had done so far sure. this year and obviously they weren't exactly psyched with how those snaps went on Sunday against Philadelphia, um, Percy didn't play nearly as much. I wonder if you see more Percy Butler in this game mm. uh, to get more speed on the field. And just from a personnel standpoint, like Chicago, maybe a little bit more too tight end, like Cole Komet's pretty one of their, their more dangerous guys. Um, do you, do you want more safeties on the field, less corners? I think, and I think and so. That probably winds up uh, bearing out in the snap counts. So that's look at you, we'll you look smart, for. smart analyst stuff. That's a good, that's a good insight there, Craig. How many, how many podcasts have we done at this point? We should I go mean, back you, and check. Yeah, we should have done a lot, but you do. I've, a good I've job, learned a man. thing or two, uh, and you know, I, I did, did some radio with some smart people before that. Uh, you know, just a lot of Washington tight ends who know a lot of football, and I've had a chance to work with over the years. You'll learn, <laughs> you'll learn something eventually. Maybe a squirrel finds a nut. All right, uh, or blind squirrel finds a nut. Squirrels, whatever people get it. Squirrels. Uh, Squirrels. Squirrel. All right. Uh, coming up tomorrow, uh, Thursday, 
We will have a take five. Logan's playing days in Chicago. Fun little story from that. And then we're live on the radio. Uh, 6.30 to 8.15 is the official Take Command pregame show. But Logan's going to join me on the Hoffman show uh, before that probably as well. It just depends on when he gets out to tap sports bar. Uh, so just so start listening at 4 o'clock on the Team 980. You're watching on YouTube 4 o'clock. And then then just lock it in. Uh, from there, if you want to, you got to go run an errand. Uh, that's fine. You can put it on the radio or on the free Odyssey app. Whatever you got to do, we got lots of coverage of the game tomorrow. So make sure that you lock us in on the Take Command pregame show. We'll see you then. Uh, no post game stream because uh, it's past my bedtime and I'm an old man. And uh, also, it's going to be very late and Logan needs to get home. But yeah. that means we're going to wake up early on Friday morning. <laughs> so make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and you get a, an instant reaction pod that, uh, as as instant as it can be with a good night's sleep in between. All right, that's our show. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this.